David King, first crack. The mine's a little bit different, OK? I'm I like different. A bit of a history lesson, OK? Because today at the MCG, we saw him do it again, Craig McRae. And absolutely he's proved it. I, I, I Googled today just to see who is the luckiest man on earth. And there's a man named Frayn Selec, a young Frain Croatian. Selec. A Croatian man. <laughs> he almost died seven times, Joey. What? So I'm seeing a little bit of a pattern here, OK? Born in 1929. In 1969, he was, he was on a train that derailed, survived. Round 11, Carlton, four points. Exactly. The <laughs> next year, he was on a plane, the door opened, fell out, landed on a haystack. There you go. Can you <laughs> really what? That? Round yeah. 12, Hawthorne, haystack. four points. There you go. On a bus, it skidded off the road into a river. Four died. Guess what? He swam to shore. Round 16, Gold Coast Suns. This Five is what's points. happening with Craig McRae. Car caught fire, jumped out, it exploded, survived. Round 17, North Melbourne, got seven hit, points. Got hit by a bus. Round 18, Adelaide, five points. Car went through a guardrail, grabbed onto a tree and survived, Dicko. He's a freak, this bloke. Round 19, four points, Essendon. And at the end of the story, he won t the lottery at age 73. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what that means. <laughs> oh, he stopped and it if off. you think this isn't true, you can Google it. It's Frame true. Select. It's a true story. It's, so that's uh, Craig McRae thing. To, to me, that all steers towards <laughs> the Pies winning the fight. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Unfortunately, he died uh, in 2016, aged 87. So he won't be there to present the Premiership Cup. <laughs> so don't get you. I don't know how he died in the end. It didn't have that at the end of the story. <laughs> but that, that's Craig McRae. I think he's. Yeah, luck follows some people, and, and you make your own luck. They, they train situational training every session. I've been down there recently, and we laughed about it last week. This can't continue. But in their mock training, everything's about 30 seconds to go, 30 seconds up, you know, two points up, two points down, need a goal, I need to save a goal. So this is not happening by chance. They, they are lucky in, in phases today, but they're there to capitalise if you make a mistake or there to force the issue. You know what you've done? So the player's going to walk in tomorrow and they'll go, G'day, Frayne, and he's going to go, what's going on there? <laughs> Frayne well, McRae. We're going to yeah. move on, though, because the game was unbelievable. Jamie Elliott, the hero, uh, goal after the siren. Oh. Now, don't know whether they won it or Essendon handed it to him on a platter. So we're going to pull it apart a little bit more now. But Jamie Elliott, though, that was remarkable. Any forward that kicks from the junction, uh, 50 metres, to kick a goal after the siren. We saw Craig McRae, we'll touch on later, mentioned that's probably the hardest kick in football. And to nail it was incredible. It was an unbelievable finish. It was an unbelievable game, really. I mean, Collingwood came out of the block, <laughs> six goals to zip. Dominated the first quarter, and we thought, oh, no. And then Essendon's next two quarters were amazing. I mean, their, sec their second and third quarters, the Bombers, they, you couldn't have played much better. It was 10 goals to two. They were on top. And then Collingwood, as they've done, for, we've spoken about it all season now, they just dared to win. They took the game on. They went through the corridor. They took risks. And you don't get this by fluke. We spoke about it last week. We spoke about the situational play. And they, they just keep doing it. This, this is now riding a wave of, of, of emotion and momentum mm. that can carry for two months. Yep. Like people are starting to say, hey, hey, they're a serious football team. Now have a look what they're doing here. The most coachable group you've ever seen. I know there's a fair bit of experience in them. We've talked about that. But the young players are not just learning how to play football or their role. They're learning what they're trying to do in game. They're coaching what needs to happen given each scenario, given each situation. That's a tough run home. It really is mm. a tough run home. But say they split it. 2-2, two, two. they're a viable premiership chance right now. I, 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 do you agree? I, I, I totally agree. I, I said it from round six that he's playing such a brand of football that he's inherited. I remember I said it was the one man's trash is another yeah. man's treasure. Yeah. He's walked in and gone, this is great. They played to win. That's not like at three-quarter time, everybody knew what the last quarter was going to look like. Collingwood were going to play to win. And they challenge you defensively because how do you stop it when you just go through the corridor and you take the game on and you take risk? It was a challenge. Essendon knew it was coming. Everyone at the stadium knew that it was coming and yet they still couldn't stop it. So, so the game is about management Moment. at the end. You've got to manage it as a leadership group. So I, I look at the Essendon leaders and have a look at how they handled the last three to four minutes of this game. And you'd have to say, the Essendon leaders, they couldn't run a bath. They really couldn't. I mean, this here, that's a dump kick straight back to a two-on-one to the number one intercept marker at Collingwood. You had other options. Now, I know you're under the heat and I know you're, you're the captain, though, Dice Nipple. They're looking for you to make the Scott Pendlebury Darcy Moore decisions that were made late in game. Look at that kick there. I mean, you've, you've got players on wide. Even challenge the umpire to, to, to make a decision rather than just give the ball back. This here, these players on the edges, and you'll see the names come up in a moment, they are coming in to celebrate. The time is not to celebrate. I mean, that's the leadership group there. McGrath, Merritt, Shield. Heppel's on the bench. Two minutes to go, Heppel's on the bench. Work that out. Why would you have your captain on the bench when the game's in the balance? You wouldn't. You need your leaders to set it up. So then this is the final play. So we try and work out how Bianco was at all this space on the wing. And there was because 
Essendon just hadn't got set up. I mean, if you're if you're a strong a strong team, strong leaders, you are saying, hey, let's presume he's going to miss the kick. Everybody get in your positions. How do we want to set up? What do we want it to look like? Let's make sure that if this if this kick misses, we're set up. Yeah. And that they, they they had 46 seconds on the clock. It's, Elliot took that mark with 26 seconds. They had 20 seconds from coast to coast for him to even have that shot at goal. So they'll be kicking themselves, Essendon, because they really they, they even if he had missed it like he did, they should have been able to deny Collingwood going the full length of the field inside a minute. We put up the numbers a month ago, OK? You're likely to score one in every 13 kickouts. You're likely to score a goal one in every 30 kickouts. Mm. So the, the absolute opportunity for this to happen is a rarity, 3 or 4%, OK? To be able to do it with that time pressure in that situation where the opposition should be organised should just not happen, should never happen. Mm. So I, I, this is on the Essendon leaders for me. And, and, and I, I, can't, I can't just walk past this one. This is absolute coaching. This is situational training. If it's good enough for Craig McRae to be doing it first year with Collingwood with no expectations on this group, then why isn't it good enough for Ben Rutten to be doing it at Essendon? I couldn't agree with you more because those leaders were deer in the headlights. They didn't know what scenario had no it idea. was. They had no idea. Any team and 17 other teams would have set up straight away and gone, if he misses that, we're ready because the game's on the line. And you said before, Joey, they're holding up. There's 30 seconds to go. You know, doesn't even take his full time on the shot clock. For one, he's not a scenario player in my mind. But let's ride the highs because Craig McRae, after the game, you'd think would be pretty happy. <laughs> yeah, I said to the boys at three-quarter time, this is, we've been here before, here we go. This is what we do. Um, but we, we do train scenarios a lot. Like, we do match play, you know, once or twice a week. And, um, you know, the last two minutes of that match play is all, all scenario-based around, OK, you, you're 30, you know, two minutes to go, you're three points behind. What are we doing? And, and we've got method. Um, just wouldn't mind not being in, in that situation. It was all disappointing, you know. I think it was, as I said, disappointing. We hit the post, yeah. you know, we couldn't get set. The ball shouldn't get down there that quick. We should spoil that ball out of bounds. You know, he kicks a great goal. Um, unfortunately, it's part of the game tonight and one of the lessons we need to learn. And um, But I'm pleased, you know, with that. They've won, what, nine in a row now. Um, and we put ourselves in a position to win the game. That's what I want us to take out of it. Well, Frayne McRae, happy. <laughs> so, um, we're running with that all year now, through the finals. Frayne McRae, happy, but summed it up beautifully. Brett, Brett Rutten got that horribly wrong. You know, happy... Ben Rutten. Give him a Sorry, new Ben Rutten. Ben, <laughs> yeah, ben Rutten. Ben. I'm changing yeah. him as well. <laughs> Who's the most unluckiest man? Yeah. Um, but Ben Rutten in that say, he's saying, oh, no, we're happy with that. Well, you, if you're happy with that, you're not right. You're not the right man for the job because I'd be seething at that and the way your players. And it falls back on the coach. It 100% does because if it was two players, you'd probably accept. Okay, those players have missed it here or missed the messaging or haven't been trained properly. But for all of them to miss it is a collective point at the coach. Yeah, I agree. I think it was, it was really quite a positive sort of press conference there. He was really pleased, you know, disappointed. These things happen in footy. I would have liked to have seen him say, no, we should have won that game. We did so much right for two and a half quarters. Absolutely, they did. But we should have finished it off there. We should have nailed that, the ending to that game. We should have won and we should have been the ones celebrating in the room. So, um, you know, and he could have taken responsibility. You know, that's on me or whatever it was for not of training it or practised it. But it was just disappointing because they did so much right. They deserved to win, really, the Bombers. But Collingwood wanted yeah. it. They played to win. Essendon couldn't finish it off. You get what you deserve in AFL footy. And if you leave the door ajar like that, mm. this team's going to kick it down. And Collingwood kicked it down. The Hepwell discussion's a good one. Because he come on the ground the four-minute mark of the third quarter. So he was on, he was on for virtually 60 minutes mm. in a row. And then had to come off with two minutes to play. So it's a mismanagement issue for the player that he can't see out the, 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 the quarter, the second half, the sec, sorry, the fourth quarter of the game. You need your captain out there. I'll tell you why you do, because you watch any other game, well, how we vocal is Dyson Heppel Well, we showed field. Pendlebury last week. We showed Pendlebury what he does to, to ice the games for Collingwood. Yeah. The, the leaders, what the leaders setting all up. They're the coaches out on the field. So that's why you need them out there late in games. Well, to his defence, he, he missed the kick. That was a shocking decision as captain and leader. But he's one guy that does yap on the field. So when he comes off... So, so, so with three minutes to go, Peter Wright was at, was at full-back take, taking a chip kick sideways. Yep. So where did he go to? So I mean, if, you, if you're going to send someone back... They stay back. I know Langford was back, but you would have expected a big presence back behind the footy. You know, Draper could have gone back. He was awesome today. Mm. You know, there's, there's, there's a few, a lot of positives there for the Bombers. Mm. But in the end, they get beaten by defensive setups again yep. and the lack of situational awareness. I don't know what Hams was doing. 
allowing Bianco to have the whole wing at the MCG to roam. Well, if you can't impact, don't go. Oh. And, and no, no disrespect, Usain Bolt could have impacted that. I, I, think no this is a loss. I think this is a loss that puts him under pressure. Yep. Because we, we're talking about this team having enough talent to beat a team that's top four, to, 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 to win nine in a row. So if they're good enough to do that for the 119 minutes of 120, you've got to get the job done. This is, this is on the lack of awareness for this football club. When the heat was on, they had no leadership and no idea what to do. Mm. They were flying blind. Mm.